when the pandemic hit us, uh, we had issues with testing first uh, because we were not, uh, uh, you know, uh, we did not have sufficient, um, um, uh, you know, uh, the network of uh, the uh, labs around the country, though we there are many, but the assays in particular that are required, the tests, the test assays, that are required in particular for testing a particular virus, which in this case happened to be the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, was not there in initially, which again was a global problem. And then parallelly came the admissions in the hospitals uh, for those of them who were severely, in, uh, you know, infected mm -hmm. because of the transmission rates. The wave, I mean, the first wave caught us all. Um, off guard. I mean, I don't think anybody was prepared for it. Even the the large countries like the United States and the Western world had called out for help. They needed antivirals and all kinds of other medications, which India again has been on the forefront because we have a huge uh, <clears throat> bandwidth of pharmaceutical manufacturing organizations uh, and we had the bandwidth to manufacture antivirals for a very very long time when we started doing the vaccine development uh, our only resource was vaccine manufacturing because we again have a large foothold in this country where we are absolutely 100 percent self-sufficient when it comes to vaccine manufacturing. All our vaccines in the international immunization, in the universal immunization program are manufactured by Indian manufacturers. So the large volumes in terms of a normal birth cohort of the country is manageable, say 100, 200 million doses of vaccines, of every vaccine has been done in the past and it continues to be done. But when the pandemic hit us, it was just mind blowing because the entire population has to be addressed. So that is where then the issues start. The real challenges come is yeah, when yeah. we have to scale up to the numbers that we are. We have to play and we have to be ready to um, vaccinate. So we've reached out to the NIV, the National Institute of Virology, to the ICMR primarily, and then asked for these virus strains. Because at that point of India, we did not have R&D labs in our country who had at least started uh, doing some work or had some background information on the virus itself. So we reached out and we got the strains from um, NIV Pune and then our work started rolling out. We brought the actual strains of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus into our uh, facilities live uh, and kicking, of course, and uh, our bioprocess engineers and te technologists who deal with all these um, uh, areas of bioprocesses uh, then started uh, working with it and, uh, you know, multiplied it, inactivated it, and then formulated the vaccine uh, in probably less than 45 days. But after which then came the enormous task of proving that this proof of concept will work efficiently, effectively, and safely. I think that is the most important point. In normal scenarios, I, I, I can talk about we look at vaccines for 10, 15, and 20 years. Sometimes we don't have an end product or an end result coming out of the tunnel. But in this case, during the pandemic, in spite of the challenges that we had and the COVID restrictions, the all the other issues, uh, the social factors, the fears, the public health uh, protocols that we had to um, also be uh, very cognizant of in, in ensuring that safety of our own employees was also extremely important uh, because they were all working. All of us were working, in fact. And uh, <clears throat> that is how I think we collaborated. We partnered with medical institutions, with uh, R&D laboratories, with hospitals and with doctors and the medical fraternity in order to ensure that um, that our 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 vaccine would be proven and would be uh, would be a very strong candidate potential candidate for being uh, introduced uh, for immunizing uh, our own population in India and elsewhere if required.
I would say in terms of the way our public distribution mechanism in this country works, uh, the government system works through distribution to the states. The states send it to their um, district hospitals. The district hospitals from there on would send it to their the, uh, the small rural uh, primary health centers or the mandal at the taluk or the mandal level depots that they have. So these vaccines, our own vaccines in the past, uh, I mean the country's vaccines, not our companies, are all stored anywhere between minus 20 degrees, for example, which is the polio vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine. And then we have graduate, also we have a range which brings us to two to eight degrees. So we have a bandwidth of vaccines which we have been continuously manufacturing, supplying and, distribu and distributing. So <clears throat> when it comes to distribution, the public system is only through the pr public hospitals and the public chain of distribution. Whereas, and then we also have the other segment, which is not as big as the public one. This is the private market, where we have private hospitals and private um, clinics and doctors who procure mostly pediatricians and general physicians who do who then procure most of these uh, vaccines depending on their uh, practice and their uh, um, area of expertise, procure them directly from the distributors that we have in the private market as well. There are absolutely a pockets where it is very difficult. The ASHA worker or the last mile um, public wor uh, health worker is the only person who is going to be able to carry a vaccine on horseback or camelback or on their own backs, on cycles and many other modes of drones were deployed. We need to look at funding ourselves, increase funding, increase partnerships among ourselves if we can, if we have the expertise, look at uh, similarities and, you know, uh, complementing e each other in terms of how our expertise and the other organization's expertise can come hand in hand. I think that was also tried out during the pandemic. The, the, uh, you know, there were companies which whom even we have worked with, we collaborated with other vaccine players uh, who could give us some aspect of the process so that we could cut time, we could reduce time in manufacturing. So we have done that. We, we need to collaborate more with R&D institutions. And I think mm -hmm. our own R&D institutions in the country also have to come um, halfway to the, you know, onto the table. And both of us sit together and do this in, you know, jointly in public private mm -hmm. partnerships, which was also demonstrated by us. Uh, about five, seven years ago in the rotavirus vaccine development. The best way going forward would be public-private partnership. I think that will solve a majority of the challenges that we face um, in the industry today. Mm -hmm.